All right, so we mentioned K Dot, mm -hmm. Kendrick Lamar, and we mentioned Drake earlier. So I gotta ask you, right. everyone, you know today's goat. It's like a three-headed goat: Kendrick, Drake, and Cole. So I gotta ask you, All right. who are you choosing? Damn, bro. <laughs> What it do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I'm your host, Day with an I, not a Y, do not X, Y, and today I have a great one for y'all because we are joined by an artist who's not only fire, but who actually spits fire as bars like i have hot hardest on here and that's not to take away from them but as someone who grew up in the 90s and was heavily influenced by 90s hip-hop more so based out of new york i have always taken lyrics very serious and to have someone here who is about the same type of time it's an honor for him to be here for me to introduce him to y'all ladies and gentlemen we are joined by the one and only shane yeah what's up what's up what's good yeah what's yeah up? my dog again appreciate you for pulling up for riley mm -hmm. um to charlotte we are here so i'm gonna start by this you're from the crib you're from pg county maryland yeah pg county okay yeah man grew up in uh landover oh all right yeah right in landover um man it's crazy because the, they didn't gentrify my whole hood now so it yeah. kind of looked different out there now but yeah, yeah pg county to the you know to the core um how long were you out there before you came to north carolina Bro, <clears throat> man, I was up there until, well, you know, it's crazy is I used to uh, come back and forth here as a, you know, as, as a teenager and mm -hmm. everything, like my mom and dad had kind of split. So I was like back and forth all the time. So yeah. when I did it, eventually moved like around, what was like 20, 2005. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, that's when it was like, okay, cool. But then when I moved, they got out of the moved back up top. So then yeah. it was like I was only here for a few years, then right. went back. But officially, officially came here like, man, I want to say 2018. Okay, so yeah. that's that's mm -hmm. relatively, that's a good time for you to see like how much North Carolina between Raleigh and Charlotte Different. has yeah. grown yeah. like grown. within yeah. the past few years. Yeah. I and, seen what I was like coming into. Like yeah. it wasn't just like a oh I'm gonna move this place and I don't know what's going on. Right. It's like I already kind of knew. Yeah. What I was getting myself into. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that's mm -hmm. a lot of people. <clears throat> Charlotte alone, I think more so people as far as people from outside of the Carolinas, South Carolina, North Carolina. I think it's more so New York, and I mm -hmm. think like Maryland is second. Um, I can attribute to that. Me myself, I'm from Laurel. Oh, word, dope. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah, what's yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you right up, yeah. you right up the road. Exactly, then. Yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. So like, me coming out here, man, I love the vibe, mm -hmm. and it is a lot of people from up north. You know what I'm saying, and they, you know, the true uh, Carolinians, they got mixed feelings about it, but. Yeah. Nah, I, hibernating down here, dog. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. damn, I know y'all hate it, but I mean, it's all love. Yeah, it's like you know a jambalaya pot of everybody from here. Exactly. Like New York, Atlanta. Exactly. Maryland. Man. It's crazy, right? Yeah, now. yeah. All right, so I'm going to ask you this. So every artist that I have come on the show, the first thing I do is I start off by asking them, we're going to, uh, the vinyl wall. Mm -hmm. And for those who can't see, I'll tell y'all the vinyls that are on here, the albums that are on here. But I ask every artist to pick one. If they could choose one and only album to pick one and why. And for those tuning in that can't see it, I'm going to go ahead and run down each album. So we have Dr. Dre the Chronic. We have Wu-Tang, Enter the Wu-Tang, 36 Chambers. We have Raekwon, Only Built for Cuban Links. We have 2014 Forest Hills Drives. We have The Great Adventures of Slick Rick. We have 808s and Heartbreaks by Kanye West. We have Victory Lap by Nipsey Hussle. We have Alfredo by Freddie Gibbs. We have Stank On Ya by Outkast. We have Illmatic by Nas. We have Cushion OJ by Wiz. We have The Blueprint by Jay-Z. We have Ready to Die by the Notorious B.I.G., a.k.a. Biggie Smalls. And we have Doggy Snow by Snoop D-O-double-G. Now, my question for you, Shane. Ah, we. I know it's pressure, but <laughs> that's the point of it. <clears throat> you pick one and only album off the album wall. What are you picking and why? Dang, bro. Yeah. We're on the spot with it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm going to go... I'm gonna go Nas Illmatic. Nas Illmatic. I'm gonna do Nas Illmatic because I think that when he came in, he kinda like, he really like changed the game, like for a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then secondly, like just his storytelling ability. Mm -hmm. And I don't think nobody was rapping the way he was rapping when he first came out. Yeah, because that like, was 94. Yeah, Great, like yeah. people was like, Boy, it was looking at it like, dog, who is this dude? You yeah. know what I'm saying? And right. so 
Um, yeah, man, I, I I think Nas does it for me. It's um, it's hard though, cause it's a lot. You got a lot of joints up here that I like. I was influenced by. Yeah. But Nas is probably like the Illmatic album alone is in my top three for sure. Though. Yeah. Top. I think top three is too easy. Top two songs off of Illmatic. It ain't hard to tell. Nice. And I'm gonna do one love. Yeah, because yeah. if you talk about storytelling yeah. and <clears throat> Illmatic, I think One Love off the Illmatic yeah. is like One Love was crazy. Him and yeah. Q-Tip on there, man. Yeah. That was that was fire, man. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of drinks on there though. That's hard though. Exactly. I can listen to that from start to finish. And, exactly. You know. And um, it's it's only uh, it's not a long mm -hmm. album. I think it's maybe it's like eleven tracks. I think maybe eleven, nine or ten. It's something Some, like somewhere that. between something. eight and eleven. Yeah, it's not a lot. So my question for you is like with albums that come out now, like you'll see like twenty something album tracks, mm. um, twenty something track albums and whatnot, and right. they call them fillers, I think, and whatnot. Like, what's your opinion on like shorter albums that are straight to the point or longer ones? But then some artists are like, well, I created the longer ones to kind of like feed to my audience more. Yeah. So you know I'd be what feeling mean? like they trying to get out of contract when they do that shit. But mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, it's in a sense, but break that down. Um. I mean, sometimes you have deals like that where you have, you you are, you know, you are entitled to a certain amount of songs that you have to give to a label, mm -hmm. and you got to fulfill that. You know what I'm saying? So, I feel like personally, I feel like when I see that, I, that's what I see because I'm not about to give you no 25 tracks. You know what I'm saying? Like especially the way music is being put out nowadays right. and at a faster rate. And then you you look at how songs were back in the day. You could get a four minute song, yeah, and it might be on the radio, but now metrics are different where it's like man you're going to hear two minute song from people yeah you know and it's going to be that's going to be the single they're going to push it you know and the art you know the um the uh bpm is going to be fast mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying whatever yeah. you know that but that goes into a whole bunch of you know what i'm saying things of like hit making and all that what they call it criteria but yeah yeah man um that's interesting so yeah. you're saying it's it's uh I'm, I'm guessing it's for some, not for everybody, but yeah. it's a amount of songs that they have to give to the label, not amount of albums. Yeah, so, um, it, yeah, it's, it just depends on what your contract is, because you right. could, you know, whatever you're negotiating in that room, you yeah. know, you could have, because they could say, hey, we're gonna sign you to an X amount of single deals, right? You know what I'm saying, and or songs or whatever that you have to do. Yeah, it's just what you negotiate. You know, some people go in there and be like, all right, you signed to two albums or whatever, yeah. then boom. But you could be an artist that don't do albums. You just do singles. Like a lot of artists right now are don't even have albums. They just hitting out singles. Like because that's like what is what is more so kind of about now, right? That's the way now. Yeah, yeah. like if you yeah. get something that <clears throat> can take off on content, people yeah. making content behind it. If you can get something that takes off on YouTube, the yeah. video is good or whatnot, then. I mean, shoot, that's all you really need for yeah. you to even get the traction to even maybe get a, a deal after that. Yeah. Um, let me ask you, are you signed to a deal now? I have a distro, I have a distro deal through Equity Rock Nation. Okay. But uh I don't have like a major record yeah. deal, maker deal. Um I don't know how I feel about it yet. I mean, I have, you know, had some talks with people and um, I got some meetings next year. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know. I'm just kinda in limbo with it right now when it comes to making that decision. So I hear a lot, I see, I watch a lot of interviews with like artists who are like vets in the game now. Uh -huh. And they always talk about how like that first deal was kind of not the best or shady or whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah. So like, and they say they, <clears throat> they had to take it to get the uh, publicity. Yeah. Right. Even on the back end, yeah. it wasn't the best deal. Yeah. Right. So, like, do you agree with that? Like, do you think like you oh, kind of yeah. put your foot in the mouth, but you still get the publicity, even though it may be not may not be the best deal to start out with? I feel like I feel like you take the first deal. Um, everybody that I've talked to, that's you know, I got friends that's in the you know in the, that's been signed and stuff, and mm -hmm. they all say take the first deal because you could use it for what it's worth. And then if you capitalize off of it, then you might not need it again. You know right. what I'm saying? Um, you know, everybody deal ain't gonna be the best one at first. Yeah. You know, unless you like Drake or somebody like you know what yeah. I mean? Or yeah. but shit, I'm sure you know, even probably whoever. his was a little shady because he did he sign a Young Money at first? He signed a Young Money at first, but his stock was high. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? So that's why, like I just learned this last year, like you know, um, that artists that are independent, you kind of 
put a foot in your mouth by um by calling your projects albums before you get signed. How so? Because what happens is you get into a room and the label want to sign you. Say, say Rock Nation wants to sign you. Yeah. Then, okay, they're going to be like, all right, we're going to take an accountability your buzz. Your buzz is crazy right now, all right? right? But let's see what your last album did independently. So they're going to go check your metrics, mm. all your data, and see what, you know what I'm saying? So they're going to gauge what they pretty much want to give you mm -hmm. money-wise by that. Yeah. Instead of being like uh, Nipsey Hustle, who Nipsey never had albums. He 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 was smart. He called them mixtapes right. or singles. Yeah. And so then when he went into the label deals, he could kind of dictate what he and negotiate in a better standpoint of what he mm -hmm. wanted because it was like, okay, only thing y'all can see is okay, I put out a hundred album, I mean a hundred mixtapes and I sold them for a hundred dollars a piece. Right. So it's like, yo, that that's ten thousand, yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, that's leverage. Yeah, that's leverage, right. you know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, if people paid a hundred dollars for this, imagine what they're going to do for a song that's streaming for $9, bro, or $10, right. you know, or $2, you know what I'm saying? They're going right. to go crazy. Yeah. So it was like, it, he dictated it better, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you kind of put your, a foot in your mouth when you go in there and you like, yo, I dropped two albums independently and they like, all right, well, let's see. And you got 200,000 streams mm -hmm. and they like, you think it's hard. Like, man, right. my homie, I put 2,000. Yeah. Nah, bro. It ain't, uh, it ain't really hitting. You ain't have nothing behind it. Yeah. They're going to give you what they think you're worth. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And since you mentioned mixtapes, um, as compared to being independent and calling them albums and whatnot, yeah. say you're signed, right? You're signed yeah. even still. Which do you prefer, mixtapes or albums and why? Hmm. It depends. Uh, I feel like so much goes into an album, bro. Like, my last album I dropped... Man, it, it was exhausting. But you know, at the same time too, I, I'm you know I'm working independently, yeah. so I do everything. So when I go down to recording and you know paying my features, press, marketing, and all of that, bro, that's coming out of my pocket. That's all know? your budget. That's all me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I mean, I've had investors and stuff too, but right. that's all me. OPM. Yeah, I feel like you're putting so much into a body of work when you're doing an album, so you kind of want to make it your best work. Mm -hmm. Your mixtapes are kind of, is a is a is something before the album, I feel like. You're going to put a mixtape out to help promote, uh, promote an album. That's what yeah. I feel like. You know what I'm saying? And you might not even care how, you know, you might not even care the uh the about the structure of the album or anything mm -hmm. or trying to you know make everything flow together you might just be doing a fifty cent type style and jacking for beats or something yeah you know what I mean or but albums man yeah you bruh yeah for if I like yeah so if I'm be honest like how I felt with this last album putting it on I would rather do a mixtape with my next one you know what I'm saying and then because they're just the Amount of like stress and whatnot that went into yeah the amount of stress and then um yeah it's like I said man I'm, I'm gonna be honest like I probably put like probably just throwing this out there but it probably ain't close but I probably put like maybe fifteen to twenty grand mm -hmm. into my last drink yeah you know and you might not even see that back yeah. you right. know what I'm saying right. so it's a gamble you gambling yeah. on yourself yeah. when you do this stuff so um now if I had to put out a mixtape. If I could go back, I would have just gave people like a five track EP, mm -hmm. six track, hit them with like two or three of those. Yeah. And then once I get like a major or something, then like, all right, bam, I'm gonna hit y'all with this. Yeah. I got the budget to really go through this now. Yeah. Uh. I think it'll pay back though. I know it'll pay back. Yeah, eventually you know I mean? it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, eventually yeah. it does. I yeah. feel like it does because think of people when Kendrick came out years ago, he was K Dot. Like nobody knew who Kendrick really was. Until he dropped, you know, Good Kid, Mad City. Right. But it made people go back and hear Section 80 uh, and overly dedicated and yeah. all those other things. So right. it was like he recouped from that. So it's okay. like really ain't a loss. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm definitely on the same type of time, like with the with the podcast. Like I put out, you know, like I have some episodes that go crazy. Like right. when I interview Lex Luger, that one with, uh, has, will, yeah. and always <clears throat> will do numbers. But yeah. even like even the other ones besides that, I'm like, yo, this this fucking episode was great. Yeah. I'll put it out, maybe get a couple hundred views mm -hmm. compared to like a couple thousand or whatnot. Or mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But I know once it keeps 
snowball effect. Once it keeps getting bigger and bigger, like you said, when they right. go back, they be like, damn, this shit was fire. I don't want to wait a whole week for his next episode. Let yeah. me go back and watch, you know what I'm saying? Let me binge a whole bunch of shit that he yeah. got from back then. And it's like the same thing. So yeah, it's important. I think for any creator to have whatever it is, have that back catalog yeah. so that people can go back to, because they want to see where you came they from. They want to see your journey. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, you tip top with it now and you're going to get better and better. Mm -hmm. But they want to see, you know what I'm saying, the beginning stages too. What took yeah. you to this point, you know what I'm right. saying? So Exactly. And that's and you know, to be real, that's content in itself too. Yeah. You know, you you don't know how many jewels. I know we get up here, we get on interviews or we get on whatever, and we be dropping a lot of jewels and a lot of information to people. And then as time goes, we kind of tend to forget or whatever. You go back and watch these things, like, damn, he did say that. Like Should be you know what I'm saying? Damn, gold that's crazy. Mines, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So you always you always don't um you always find a way to pick up knowledge even as further you go. You know yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, so we mentioned K. Dot, mm -hmm. Kendrick Lamar, and we mentioned Drake earlier. So I got to ask you, right. everyone, you know, today's GOAT, it's like a three-headed GOAT, Kendrick, Drake, and Cole. So I got to ask you, All right. who are you choosing? Damn, bro. I feel like I'm being biased because I, I, I rock with Dreamville. Um... I got to go with Cole right now. And the reason why I say Cole right now is because Cole, lyrically, I feel like he in a different, he different from what he was a few years ago. And he's consistent. Uh, now, if you would ask me years ago, I, I would go with Kendrick because I feel like Kendrick drops, a, he drops better bodies of work than them two, I think. Right, right, his albums. Yeah, magic, but he yeah. just takes too long. Yeah. And I get it, you know what I'm saying? He got to yeah. feel inspired, you know? Yeah. But Cole just, bro, he just he just eating right now. Cole man. has been on a fucking terror yeah, he eating, with bro. these features. <laughs> these features have been crazy, What bro. the fuck has, uh, yeah. yo, and then like you said, he's grown. Yeah. And I, I think this is kind of like what Joe Budden was getting at with Drake when mm -hmm. he said that comment as far as like your music's not maturing with right. your age, you're 37, <clears throat> still rapping like you're 22. Right. I don't think he, and then uh, he might have been a little shady with the, your fucking 25 year old girls. Like he might have been shady with that, but. I mean, that's, that's a nigga business. Yeah, so, bro, yeah. it's, it's 50 year olds that smash in 25. Yeah, that like, happens every day, B. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but look, I think that's what he was getting at. I think he was kind of comparing it to Kendrick and Cole because Cole lately, like we said, been on the fucking Sarah. Then right. Kendrick with uh, Mr. Morale and the Big yeah, Steppers. Morale, yeah. You know what I mean? That's coming from a grown ass man who's yeah. taking accountability in his life and all that other shit, going through therapy and whatnot. That's maturing, yeah. right? Yeah, I just I just feel like Drake though has always been giving you that though through the years in a sense of relationship advice. You know what I'm saying? Like what he's going through with his fam. Like what was that album called, bro? Dang, was it nothing was the same? With the one where he's like in the clouds. In the clouds, yeah, yeah. What is that? Yeah, yeah, like you know, he he did a lot of like, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. Um, I don't think he'll ever I don't know. I've been wanting a, a rap album from Drake where it's just all rap. Like like he did on 8, 8 a.m. in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. I would love this uh, Drake album like that. I thought that was what the whole album <laughs> yeah, was Yeah, I thought it was be. too when he dropped I'm this shit. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Because yeah. uh, didn't like Yachty before the album say something as to where y'all want the old Drake or something like that. Y'all mm -hmm. going to get it. This album's going to feel, be filled with the yeah. old Drake. And then 8 a.m., the snippet 8 a.m., I'm like, oh this shit. shit was crazy. That's the intro. He's yeah. about to be spitting the whole joint. And then boom, he comes with and the singing boom, shit. Yeah, I I was, like, I was I was disappointed. I mean, I don't. I think we might get it before he retires. Hopefully, you know. But uh, one day he has to. But I think yeah. the reason is because he has to cater to the different crowds. Like he has three crowds that he has to cater to, Dude, bro. The women, he, the men. Then he also been doing what was that joint? Like he kind of did the house music for a little bit too. Yeah, yeah, that that. Yeah. And you know, he's trying to be diverse, which is yeah. smart because Drake out of the three has been how I see it. I think out of the three, Drake has been the biggest artist. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. He's like. I mean, he about, to, what, he about to pass Michael Jordan. I mean, Michael Jackson I'm tripping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Jackson. Sure. Yeah, so yeah. I think Drake is the biggest artist. Now, when we talking MC, that's when Kendrick and Cole are on their yeah. own island with that one. But yeah. Drake has to, like we said, he has to cater to us who mm -hmm. like bars. Mm -hmm. He has to cater to the women. To the women. And then he has to cater to, like, the younger crowd. Yeah. Like, he's, you know, <clears> hanging out with the 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 Kai Connects yeah. and the, you know, the Ice Spices. You know, like, they don't give a fuck about bars. They, so yeah. he has to cater to yeah, them. Yeah, he got to cater to them. And yeah. I don't see nothing wrong with that, man. I, I kind of think 
I kind of think Joe was kind of over playing that, bro. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, yo, if it's broke, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Drake gonna drop, whatever he drop is gonna go crazy. It's yeah. stream wise anyway. And you I know think know everything I mean? he's dropped has been catering to the whole, to all three. He's been catering the to whole all time. three. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so you can't make everybody happy. Yeah, you know it's, I mean? it's it's. I think it's just like he said, like we said, it's because he wanted him to be on some cold shit. Now let's talk again about the cold. Mm -hmm. Um. So two weeks ago, I did a live stream with my homie Granville. Shout out to Granville Richards. <clears throat> we was on here, we were talking and whatnot, and he goes, and I'm like, yo, Cole has been killing shit on these features lately. I'm thinking back to the, um, what's that shit called when he did with the, uh, is it London? Oh, the one with Bia. Yeah. Yeah, he killed that song. Yeah, that song destroyed crazy. it. Yeah. Fucking Uncle P, uh, uh, Uncle John, uh, Johnny P. Caddy. Johnny B. Caddy. Smoked Beanie, bro. I'm sorry, And, and the bro. thing about that is, yeah. Beanie killed, I, mean, I said Beanie. Yeah. Beanie. <laughs> <laughs> Benny killed it too. Like, yeah. if it was anybody else on that track, then we would be talking about how bad, like, Benny killed it. Benny yeah. killed it. Yeah, Benny went on. But Cole just, what the fuck? It made when you he, feel like that was his song. It was, yo, it was, it was like, yo, I'm the captain now. Like, when, he, when, he, <laughs> when he did that Einstein, really no MC equal yeah. bar, I'm like, wait, hold on. I, I really, I'm like, there's no way he put yeah. that together the way he did. I had to re rewind it because, like, nah, he didn't do that. I'm like, why? I'm at the point where I'm like, why are y'all paying him? Yeah. I mean, I, he probably don't even pay because I heard the code don't work like that. Like, he got to right. fuck with you. But, like, it's like, bruh, like, are y'all prepared for this? Because you know he not going to get on there and be, and you know, so, you know sugarcoat shit. He going to uh, come off and he going to kill. So, I, I'm, I'm, I'm laying out these, the two songs I said to lead up to it. Then the All My Life with uh, Dirt. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, a change of pace. And um, I actually like, shout out to Shezzy Reese. She compared that to Hard Knock Life with Jay-Z, which I thought was a decent parallel mm -hmm. as far as kind of like you're, you're because Jay-Z catered to kind of the younger crowd with yeah, that he when he threw that yeah. Annie hook yeah, on there, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, and then yeah. Dirk and Cole, like they, you know, had the kids in the video. So yeah. they, because Dirk is known for straight drill shit. Mm -hmm. And then Cole is known for us. So yeah. for them to kind of branch and reach out to that, I thought that was decent. But mm -hmm. I say that to say, the secret fucking recipe. The one with Yachty, yo, that was fucking crazy. I've heard a lot of people do freestyles off of that beat, like after the fact too. Oh yeah, they don't even come close. It's like yeah. you gotta, you gotta come crazy on that joint if you're gonna do a pause. But yeah, like I, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and since you said that, he, he shouted out, you know, he said, out Cam and, pause and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and then Cam had a freestyle to it. Yeah, but um, yo, I mean. I haven't heard nothing like that in a long time, bro, because he did the same. I, mean, I don't know the proper terminology. You wouldn't mm -hmm. know as an artist, but he did the the end of each line was the same three rhyme schemes. It's like a double entendre. Yeah, yeah like, like it was double, double entendre. Uh, Mason Beth, Greatest Yet, yeah. Face of Death. Like mm -hmm. each, the whole, his yeah. whole verse, the last three things was those like was rhyme schemes. came back to it, yeah. And like, what the <clears throat> That's a different level, bro. Like yeah. you gotta, that come with, that come with repetition. And you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I'm gonna be real, cause, oh, uh, excuse me. Like we uh, artists, we um, we tend, I mean lyricists, we tend to overthink a lot, you know. And what do you mean by that? Like what I mean? Okay, it's harder for us to do shit like that. Hmm. Uh, is that often, or is that like a one in a thousand? Article say million because. You know, y'all make so much music. Is that like... Yeah, we make so much music, but like what we... Like, okay, like recently, I, like one of my OGs was like, bro, you're trying to... You're 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 overworking yourself lyrically on tracks that don't need it. Like, for example, like I'm doing... I'm rapping on like heavy hitting, like heavy hitting um, like 808 type beats and, mm -hmm. you know, trying to find a formula to make hits. Okay. And it's like... These hits that people dropping nowadays are so simple. Right. It's like you could say roses are red, violets are blue, and that shit gonna pop for right. niggas. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But us as lyricists, we overthink that shit. So we think we gotta say something crazy in these joints or whatever. So that's why I say it's harder for us as you know, the real rappers mm -hmm. to pin shit like that. I mean, we get it quick though. It comes right. to us because it's natural, it's a muscle. Yeah. But like comparing us to like the new wave of rappers where yeah. shit is so repetitive and so right. simple. Bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. since like <clears throat> lyricism is kind of is with the with the more today's style of rap right. with song. Well, let me say this: with today's songs that 
go off more right. so. It's not as much about lyrics, or they don't take lyrics as serious nah. as we do, or growing up, or the the vets nah. do, right? So, do you ever find yourself like um, maybe saying, "Okay, I can add a twist to it to cater to them," mm -hmm. or do you find yourself staying in that lyricist space and saying, "You know, I'm gonna either bring this back, or the people that get it will get it." Yeah, you gotta you gotta be coming. You gotta be complacent where it's just like, look, people gonna get it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I'm not gonna say dumb it down, like dumb your shit down or mm -hmm. whatever, but you gotta you gotta find some common ground in it. That's what I feel like. If you're trying to cater to everyone. Right. You know, now if you're just trying to stay in that lane, I'm not gonna say of Cole, because I feel like Cole is in a in a Cole, the way he's been rapping lately, he's kind of been catering to everybody because you know, he's been on that track with, with Gucci right. and all that and yeah. you know what I'm saying? And and so it's like he been that way to give you radio songs and the lyrical stuff. So yeah. I just feel like if you find a common ground, then you good. But yeah, man, it ain't I don't it ain't gonna comparison when it comes to like real lyricists to what we call the which, movement, which is know. crazy though because yeah. like the purest form of rap is the lyrics, yeah, right? Is, yeah. And then like the beats, of course. Now beats make this beat the song, and I've always liked beats. Mm -hmm. Like when people say um, Nas didn't have the best beats and whatnot, mm -hmm. but yeah. his his lyrics <clears throat> carried them. I, I'll be honest, the songs where his beats did go off, mm -hmm. I like those better. Right. Like New York State of Mind mm -hmm. or um, I Gave You Power mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So that songs, was crazy. Yeah, yeah. So songs <laughs> where his beats did, like I like those better. Yeah. Um, but it nah, it it, it is kind of wild because it's like. Well, let me ask you this. Everything is like a cycle in life. Mm -hmm. Everything is, do you think it's going to come back to the lyrics? I, yeah, I think it is. Um, there's a lot of artists that are doing it right now that, that's bringing it back to the, but I just don't think that it's being pushed to the forefront mm -hmm. like everything else is. You know, you got to really dig for it. You know, there's a lot of dope artists out there, though, man. It's with J.I.D., yeah. Denzel oh, Curry. Yeah, been going crazy lately. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, you know who's uh, someone who's been, or some ones, some persons who's been like on that stage as far as like representing like the lyrics and bringing that shit back, but also adding like a little twist and a little boom back to a Griselda. Yeah. I like Griselda. I fuck with Conway the most. Yeah. Uh, I've been on tour with him twice. Um, That's my dog. Like, and the coolest nigga ever, bro. Um, I just feel like outside of him, that Benny and Westside, they just like, they just, it's, they on one wave and that's the mm -hmm. drug wave. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then Conway, you, like, you'll hear Conway on everything. You'll hear him on Boom Bap Beats, you'll hear him on Trap Beats. You know what I'm saying? What was that drink? Scatter Brains with Ludacris and yeah. J.I.D. Like, yeah. you'll hear him on stuff like that and he, he swags off, you know yeah. what I'm saying? He gets it. But when I hear Benny and him trying to go on stuff like that, like, it don't feel... Like they're comfortable on it, you know yeah. what I mean? To be yeah. fair, Conway was the first artist out of the group. He mm -hmm. was the first one that was rapping. Yeah. Um, my my opinion on it is I think Benny is I think Benny has bars too. Oh yeah. Now he's not as much of a spitter as Conway if that makes sense, mm -hmm. but I think <clears throat> sense, but I think Benny has bars, but they are mostly drug bars. Yeah. And then Westside I mean, he calls his form like art. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, he's kind of everywhere with different. it. He's, yeah, he's in his own lane yeah. with it, so we'll we'll give him that or yeah. whatnot. But I think Benny, maybe it's Benny's his punchlines are amazing. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. his punchlines are amazing. He has bars and whatnot. But yeah, he's not as much of a spitter as Conway. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, like when people ask me who's your favorite, it changes like every other month between those two. Oh, those three. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. As of lately, it's been uh, Conway mm -hmm. um, to kind of agree with you. But yeah, like when I first started listening to them in 2019, like it was like, God damn, like yo, this dude Benny is. It was like crazy. a breath of fresh air to be yeah. real, and everybody. But you know it was crazy though a lot, and a lot of OGs was feeling some type of way because they was like, "Nigga, we been doing that, like, mm. you know, we didn't, we been doing this." But I just think that when they came out, they came with a hustle behind them too, though. Like them niggas was hustling, yeah. like they was on in the streets, like you know what I'm saying. They was taking it back to the old school style, like yeah. just niggas going out passing out CDs, yeah. all that shit. Like they they really came up. I did a show in Cleveland. Yeah, I was right. Yeah, what was yeah. what was that like touring with Conway and whatnot? Oh man, that joint was crazy. That was my first like uh taste of like an actual tour, like where mm -hmm. I went on six dates with them, so it was like repetitive, like yeah. back to back to back, bro. I was fucking tired. But yeah, like um 
Man, that shit was dope. And that's where I learned, too, how to be disciplined, or where it's like, all right, after the show, take your ass back to the room and just mm -hmm. chill. Yeah. Because I was trying to party with niggas and, yeah. you know, all that other shit. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I was just like, yeah, I was and trying then, to do And then you much. was new to it, I assume, as yeah. opposed to, like, dudes that have been doing it for years. They kind of know how to balance <laughs> yeah. that party tour. Yeah, like, because you know. I, I was new to it because I've been on... I've been on tours where I did like one dates with niggas, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I did, well, I did two two shows with Wu Tang when they got back together, and then um, but those and those were back to back, and then I did what cities? I probably we did uh, you know, South Carolina and Raleigh. Okay, yeah, I, I went when they was in uh, VA Bristol, Virginia. Oh, you went to that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah was that was when they first got back together. This was 2019, I oh, okay, believe. Okay. Yeah. Like right, was that right before the pandemic? Yeah, it was yeah. before the pandemic. That, okay, so sure. that was the first one. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that joint was crazy, man. Um, but yeah, like I said, I've been on spot joints, you know, with them and Ray and Ghost and Rapper Big Pool, Little Brother, everything like that. But that was like my first taste of repetitive ones. And I was mm. like, bro, this shit is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, Damn. Yeah, they say tour life is wild. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, it's yeah. it, it because um the reason why I say it is is because uh you gotta decompress. Like after you get done with one show, then you gotta mm -hmm. go to another one. You gotta decompress from that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then you meeting so many people. Right. I believe in transfers of energy. Yeah. So you know people you meet, shake hands with, all that man, like that comes into play with you. I feel you know what I'm yeah. saying. So um you got like I said, you just gotta be very disciplined to eat the right foods for one, drink water. You know, and get some sleep. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're gonna be a fucking zombie. Mm. Yeah. Did you ever feel like was it ever like, okay, this city, my energy on point, like the show's going amazing, and then maybe like another spot, like you really had to force that energy up out of you, or is it like once you hit the stage <clears throat> and you feel the presence of anyone of everyone, it it just hits regardless? Yeah, it just hits. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, I was really tired. We we did a the, a show in Virginia when I was on that tour, and then the next night we had to do Baltimore. And I think the the Virginia after the Virginia show, I went to hang out, and so I didn't get back to the hotel till like four a.m. And then my flight had to leave out at like seven. Mm. And then you know we had to be at sound check, you know, in Baltimore like at two or three, and then get ready. So I was like, man, you be. Yeah. Take some coffee, Red Bulls, everything. Yeah. But you know, I was home then too. It was like right. Maryland, so I was excited. So the adrenaline just come in. You good then, about then. Yeah. But after that, you ready to go to fuck home? Like, right. Sleep, yeah. yeah, I could imagine. And that's only six. Imagine like fifty joints. Bro, I can't do it. I don't know. Like my homies right now. Uh, shout out my dog Luke from Dreamville. Mm -hmm. Like they on tour with IDK right now, and I did like I went on. That's I'm bro sure. from Charlotte, right? Yeah, from yeah, Charlotte. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Betty uh, Sport to the wheel fall. I was yeah. um just kicking it with them, and uh, we on a few dates, uh, and he was in D.C., Philly, and uh, Atlanta, and those were, like, back-to-back, -back. and they driving. They driving, mm -hmm. like, in a tour bus and a van. Yeah. And so that's even crazier. It's like, yeah. you, you got to get done with the show at 2 o'clock and then get right on the road mm. and head to the next city. That's yeah. different. Yeah. yeah, yeah, hustle and bustle. You mentioned Wu-Tang. Mm. Best spitter out of Wu. Raekwon the chef. Okay. Man. I gotta go with Ray. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think nobody I don't think nobody come close, man. Like I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you come close, and it's only fitting. All right. Ghost. Tony Starks. I'm uh, I'm I'm throwing ghost. I think he got a okay. I feel like he has the most distinguished voice out of the group. Like how I feel about West Side is how I feel about Ghost. Okay. But Ghost is definitely a better rapper than West Side. I say Ghost because <clears throat> the style that was just like who like who 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 the fuck makes a song where they don't they're not talking about shit but it sounds <laughs> elegant it as sounds fuck. dope as hell yeah and yeah, he yeah. even admits to it like Supreme clientele like yeah. he had dudes like really <laughs> trying to saying, study nigga, like, writing yeah. down his lyrics like trying to put it together like a Da Vinci Code yeah, or something like yeah. but who can do that and make it sound good like. We ain't talking little B where yeah, we just talking shit hell, like yeah, bro yeah. like we like how can you do that? It sound that good and then it still be accepted amongst the masses. Man, that is insane. He just had that glow, bro. Yeah, and yeah, you know, yeah. uh, but Ray, I, but Ray I think Kwan, Ray. Yeah. I think Ray. I give it to. I give it to go second, third. I give it to. I give it to Inspector Deck. Mm. He fire, yeah, low key, bro. And then I give it to Meth. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, yo, Inspector Deck had the greatest, uh, one of the greatest opening lines to a song of all time, Obamatomically. Like, oh, Obamatomically. Yeah, that yeah, was like crazy. Socrates, philosophies, yeah. and hypotheses can't define how I be dropping yeah. these mockeries, lyrically He's perform on robberies. robberies. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> who even thinks of who, how do you, like, what? Yeah, I'm going to tell you what you need to go check out too, though. You need to check out that verse he did on the Tupac song, the, uh, it's a lost verse that his verse ended up getting taken off. Mm. If you hear this song called uh, I Got My Mind Made Up, I think it's called Mind Made Up with Red Man and Method Man on it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Red Man, Method Man, and Tupac. I forgot what album it's on, but at the end, you'll hear Inspector Dex, like, he'll say, like, Iron is the Rebel or something yeah. like that at yeah. the end. And I don't know, it's a lot of controversy to why his verse is not on there. I think Pac was like, take his shit off or something because mm-hmm. something happened. But if you can go on YouTube and listen to the verse, bro. He, really? He killed that shit. Though. He had a lot of his music like this, like not the, yeah, because the flood, like I think the flood took yeah, out one of his albums shit. that yeah. was supposed to drop mm-hmm. and then whatnot. And yeah. damn, I did my man's dirty conspiracy yeah. theories. He man. hard though. He got some yeah. dope shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to talk about the freestyles. Uh-huh. I personally have him top three lyricists of all time. Okay. Really top two between him and Big, if you ask me. Okay. Um, but like you was on, uh, is it Shady Forty Five? Shady Forty Five. Shady Four Five. Shady like, what was that like? And then you know, what I'm saying like the freestyle. Like, how was that whole? How was that Man, whole adventure like? You, it's like if I, I had to. Pre- I mean, I, I didn't have to prepare for it, but like, I'm gonna just say this: you can prepare for stuff like that, and then when you get there. It's different, you know what I'm saying? You really? be like, damn, like I'm really here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I ain't gonna say I wasn't nervous. Yeah, of course. But yeah. you know, once they throw the beat on, then you know, you yeah. start getting into your element. But man, that was definitely an experience, man. Like, because I, I always wanted to go there, mm-hmm. you know, and then you know, to meet certain people, meet Sway and all them and stuff like that, yeah. man. That was like a that was like a dream, bro. That's yeah. just surreal, for real, for real. And you ripped it. <clears throat> man, I appreciate I, you. Yeah, for sure. How was that even set up? Um my manager is a good friend with uh, DJ Eclipse. Uh, he has rappers out of control. And so we kind of just um, always been connected. And I think I was supposed to go before the pandemic. And then um, it just never lined up. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. It was right after the pandemic. And okay. um, they was like being finicky because they was like, they don't know if they wanted people in the studio at that time. Mm-hmm. So as soon as the floodgates opened, they was like, yo, come through. Yeah. You know, so supposed to be going back again um, next year as well. So... And then try to try to five fingers of death with Sway. So mm. see how that goes. Yeah, man. We're looking forward to that. Can people find is it on YouTube? The yeah, uh, on YouTube. Four five? Yeah, you can go up there, go to uh Rappers Out of Control, Shay 45, and then just type in Shame Gang and then pop up. Yeah. Right, right. Do you have a YouTube channel? Yeah. Um YouTube at I am Shame Gang. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and it's, it's, it's gonna be in the um in the bio and put his YouTube in the description. Yeah. Tag us so you can see it and all that. Um, yeah, shame game. How'd you come up with the name, bro? I used to battle rap, and back in the back in the day, mm-hmm. um, I don't know if you remember this spot in Baltimore called the Dome. Nah, you I remember don't. it? But yeah, it used to be like a huge spot where like a lot of the street ballers used to come, like when when um when and one was popping, okay. like hot sauce. Everybody yeah. used to all come out there, yeah. and so that made it popular. But then dudes started coming out there like battle rapping, so mm-hmm. it almost kind of felt like. Nigga, that shit felt like eight mile out there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So um I started there and then, you know, people used to just always call me like Lil' K because that was my brother name and he was the rapper. Uh-huh. And then one day I was on stage and then this DJ was just like, yo, this nigga putting shame to niggas. Mm. And then I was like, man, I thought it was corny, but I was like, fuck it, nigga, I take it. Whatever. Yeah, <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I rolled with it from since then and just and then my my grandma kind of let the shit go even more because I used to be like a huge Fan of that movie, uh, Low Down, Down Dirty, Dirty Shame. Shame. Yeah, as a kid yeah. and shit. So I used to always be tripping when, they, when the dog started dancing off the James Brown yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how the shit popped off. Yeah, so I just stayed with it, man. Okay, that's yeah. all. Right. Yo, that is my fucking movie. That's I'm just funny I'm, as hell. I'm glad you said that shit, man. Um, yeah, and then when dude tried to, the uh, the other dude tried to sing it or whatnot. And the yeah, this shit ain't working. Yeah, hey, man. Yeah. I used to have a huge crush on Jada back then, and now I'm like, nigga, what? <laughs> Well, since we're on this road, let's talk right. about it. Um, just what's your what's your opinion on the whole poor Will, man? Yo, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it like, damn. But then I be seeing him doing these interviews with her, and he be so cool. Like, 
I be thinking like, bro, she must got some shit on this dude. She got had some crazy dirt on this dude. I like, mean, what would it look like if he spazzed out right there? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, it'd be like the Chris Rock slap yeah, all over. Yeah, like it'll, it'll, like, and, it, and it's crazy because, like, I even think back to the what's her name, Robin Givens, right, when right. Mike Tyson, when they were being yeah. interviewed and she was dogging him, and Mike just sitting there just taking. Sitting there, I yo. think like, I think like they think if they respond like in a Relax any type on. of way, then they gonna blow that shit up. Yeah. But he is tripping for sitting on some of them interviews and being so yeah not, I mean not saying <clears throat> shit like the August I was seeing the joint that was I think that's when like the shit really hit the fan like hold up what the fuck they got going that on? was crazy and he was just sitting there like just agreeing with her and all this and I'm like bro he had it, to done something they called it entanglement he had <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure Will was getting his off, yeah, too. Yeah, he had to. Yeah. You feel me? Because then y'all admitting that he was in an open relationship, I think, at yeah, one point or something. Yeah, so it's like... Yeah. He, he was getting his off. Yeah, I'm pretty man. sure he slid up in... Uh, what's her name? Margot, Margot Robbie? What's the what's the white girl name? Margot? Margot yeah, Robbie. Yeah, yeah, uh, From uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah damn, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, man. I, I think he messed with her. I just feel thing. like, bro, she should have... Bro, she should have been... She should have ended up with Pac because she talk about Pac so much. So it's like, you should have... You shouldn't even got with Will, like, you know. I mean, then you are gonna say, oh, if Pac was alive, Will and <laughs> would have been good friends and all this. I'm like, bro, that was shit, wild. Bro. That's a wild statement, like that. dog. Yeah, that's a wild statement, man. That's super wild. So it, it, it's tough, man, because it's the Prince, man. This this Mike Laurie. This Mike Laurie, bro, he could have any That's what I'm saying, bro. You, you, you portray as the being the big pimp in the movies, dog. And what's going on? Um, and then, you know, you hear the stories about how we used to lash out on dudes that would like talk the to Tommy Davis. Yeah, 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 that was wild, bro. I'm like, damn, that was crazy, bro. Man. Yeah. But that just goes to show <clears throat> you, man, like she has some by the balls. She and got when some, dog. And she when got a them. chick has you by the balls, you're screwed. She must got some fire, boy. <laughs> yeah, bro. It, ha it has to be that. She I mean, listen, fire, you, you saw how August came out and was talking about <laughs> it. I got the fire, dog. He said, what do you say? Like, if I die today, then I've experienced true love. Hell yeah, she got that ill na na. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, she my got to goodness. Me. I think that, um, so I, I actually saw um, someone who spoke on it. I'm not going to say it. Well, fuck it, I'll say it. Dr. Umar Johnson, he was okay. speaking on it. He was saying um, <clears throat> his synopsis is that he thinks Jada's like kind of, you know, putting all this out there to get him to divorce her and then, you know, mm. take half or whatnot. Yeah, because they don't have a prenup on things. Nah, yeah. so he's like, he's trying to get Will to, you know, be pushed over the edge because he's like, he doesn't want Jada to, you but know, But she file. said she don't want to divorce him, though. Didn't she say something like that? She was like, she'll never divorce Well, see, him. that might be her playing chess. Yeah. This We're just throwing yeah. theories out. We're yeah. just throwing theories out. You're that right, might be man. her playing chess. Like, I'm yeah. not going to divorce him. I don't want to do it. So maybe she's trying to push him to the edge so that she's saying that, but maybe deep down she wants to, but she's pushing him to the edge maybe yeah. so that he initiates the divorce so maybe it kind of saves face for her, it but could. she still gets half. Yeah, it could. Who knows, right? Me, personally, <clears throat> I think it's um, I think it's all marketing. I think it is too because you've got the book coming out. Yeah, he did the drop book. a book like a, uh, a a few, a year ago or something. He dropped something. I'm not sure. Yeah, but I, I heard he did. I might be yeah, wrong. Though. Yeah, yeah, And right, right, we're not fact checking right yeah. here, but, and he even said like he'd be open to them doing a book together or some shit. So I think it's all marketing. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Power play. Whatever I'm the fuck you want I'm just more bugged out on how you slap Chris and then y'all weren't even, that wasn't even your wife at the time. Like... And see, she could have kept that. She could have kept that from from being exposed. Like that man. info makes it so much worse. It was already bad enough. Man. The whole situation was already bad enough. For her to come out and say... I was confused because we weren't even together then. That shit is wild. That shit made it even worse. You could have let man. my man's rock out, make it make him look like, you know, being a, you know, just standing up for his standing wife. Up for his yeah, woman you could have made it, you could have kept it there, but it come out and be like, shit, what the fuck you do that for? I was confused. Bro, she is the, I'm like, come on, bro. She is the ultimate, bro. Like, she is <sighs> off the deep end, dog. Sorry. That is tough. Sorry, kids. That so is deep tough, end. man. My boy, my boy, <laughs> ill well. Um, but even, all right, so even like, did you see like it live, the slap happened? Bruh, I saw it live and I thought something was wrong with my TV because it went mute. Oh. And I was like, what the fuck going yeah. on? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So right. I was like trying to yeah. do this joint. So you know me, what we what niggas do, Twitter. we go to Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So went to Twitter. Yeah. 
Twitter had everything, and then I was just like, yo, this shit really happened now, but... I thought it was staged yeah. too. Still, I was like, I, it might be staged, yeah. you know, whatever. At first, everyone was like, yeah. that shit ain't real. Like, come on, bro, that shit staged. Da da da. da. And it, and then what gave it away was his energy when he was yelling. Like you yeah. could see, like he was really he was yelling real. that shit. Keep my name out. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Yeah. He was, and then Shorty from uh, Black Panther how <laughs> was she, behind, like, yeah. How, <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, how I she rap. was looking at bro. I'm like, yo, bro. I think that shit was real. That shit. And then, like, you could tell how it got awkward for Chris Rock and all that shit. I don't know how he picked the ball up after that shit because he was like, keep my wife's name out your mouth, and the dude was like, okay, like, yeah. And I was like, oh, he ain't want to fuck that bad up. <laughs> yeah. He ain't want to fuck that host money up. You I'm know right. that host bag is hefty. He ain't want to fuck that up. And plus, what the fuck is Chris Rock going to do? Yeah. Chris Rock right, ain't seeing Will so Smith. let me ask you, though. Mm -hmm. In that situation, if you Chris Rock, do you sue? Or do you... Do you sue or do you like do you just be like you let it roll and then you know you capitalize off of it with the with the... When he when he did the comedy sketch, joint yeah. out there, or what you, how you feel? What you do? So... Me personally, like, because I've been, like, dating back to high school, situation like that where someone, like, did, not physically, but did some fuck shit towards me, right. I would smash that girl. Right, right. So, <laughs> hey, my nigga, bro. So, I think if I was Chris afterwards, right. I would have, and then knowing that Jada <clears throat> and Will weren't together, I would have tried to got at, get at Jada. And I, that might have happened. I, I th he tried to. They said he, he tried to holler her when he thought they was done. So after that might have nah, before, before the smack. Before. Before the smack. So that might have warned. He might, you know what? Will might have had that already built up in him. Like, nigga, he was trying to smash yeah, my shorty from yeah, behind. Yeah, that was built so up. So now I'm about to see you, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, okay, yeah. so so I would have used that situation to get in with Jada. I've been like, yo, Jada, like, what's up with your man? It's like, why he trip out like that? Yeah. It's like, I don't know. I'm so sorry. Da -da. Damn. It's cool. We like talk about it, like, figure this shit <laughs> yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And then from there, try to slide in. But yeah. um, nah, I. <laughs> it could have happened. Yeah, 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 for real. I don't know if I would have. I wouldn't have sued. I would have got back at him somewhere. Yeah, like bro, I'm a. I probably would have still protected the bag. I yeah. probably wouldn't have hit him right then and right there. Then but when we got to the back though, off the screen, exactly, it would have been a rat though, exactly. nigga. Like you guys see me now, yeah, nigga. yeah. Like, yeah. Nah, like backstage, you could have yeah. did whatever. You yeah. know what I'm saying, and then I think his brother was there. Shit, get you and your brother jump his ass if you feel like you can't handle him. On That's your another own. thing. Like why, why he ain't pop off? Like, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm feeling like yo, my brother. He popping off, you oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So I was, yeah. So family, family would have lashed out because be yeah. like, nigga, I'm not hosting the Oscars. <clears throat> yeah. I'm finna lash out. Someone yeah. would have lashed out. Cause he like, nigga, ain't no penalty gonna come from me giving you this fade. Right, exactly. Oh, but it, that's why Solange stepped in for Beyonce on the elevator. Hey, right? nigga. Yeah, that's <laughs> Well, you ain't got as much yeah. to lose. When family ain't got much to lose, they'll be like, fuck it, I'll take care of yeah. it, right? Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't have done like the. I wouldn't have used that as leverage for the comedy joint. Cause I'm, I don't know. I just got too much pride to get slapped by a man, not do nothing about it, let it die down, man. and then hop on a comedy mm. stage and talk shit. I personally, yeah, I thought that was like kind of corny. Cause I'm yeah. like, nigga, you just let the dude do all that yeah. shit. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. I get it. Everybody gonna want to hear what you got to say about the right. shit. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, but right. still though, bro, you gotta get your get back. Man. Yeah. But to answer right then and there <clears> with a song like we, I think we could come to agree on try to see him backstage. Yeah, backstage is a wrap. Um, but if I if that didn't work for me, if I were Chris Rock, I would have tried to slide on Jada. Yeah, backstage is just yeah. it's a wrap, my dude. Yeah. 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 Um, your neck tattoo is that? Yeah. Is that? Oh yeah, this is my brother actually. Okay. You know, okay. Uh, God rest his soul. My brother passed like. Three years ago. Okay. So uh, I wanted to do like a morale for him, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I did, you know, how he looked as a grown man on this mm -hmm. side, and then, you know, the baby on that side. You know oh, what that's I'm saying? hard. So, like to pay homage to him. So, yeah. yeah. I was going just from sitting here, like you got the jack in the way. Mm -hmm. From the hat, it looked like Red Man. From like oh, the right, eyes, right. from the eyes and the hat up right. off Bucks, I thought it was Red Man. You know, it's crazy is most people when I, when they see me, Cause me and my brother resemble each other so much. Mm -hmm. They be like, "Oh, you got tattoo yourself on your neck?" I'm like, "No, nigga. Like, mm -hmm. I would never do. Yeah. I, was, I ain't conceited, nigga. Yeah, nah. Like, I wouldn't do no shit like that. So, yeah. yeah, I just I wanted to do like a morale to pay to him. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know what's crazy is like before he passed, I ain't never really have a lot of tests like that. Mm. So how it, many you got now? Now I got eleven. Okay, but at the time when he passed, I probably only had like five. Yeah, you know. So, bro, it's true what they say. You get ink, that shit just... It's addictive. Can, it's addictive like a motherfucker, bro. I guarantee you already have at least your next three tattoos planned out. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a wrap. Yeah, yeah, it's a wrap for you. Like, yeah. I already know I'm going to get my grandma. I'm going to get a portrait of my grandma on my arm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I want to get... um. 
like a snake on this one, okay. but it's like a snake that has like a uh, emerald in his mouth. You know what I'm saying? Because what, like what does that? What does that? It's my it's my birthstone. So it's like okay. a yeah birthstone. Okay. Gotcha. And then um. But the left side, I don't know with this one. I kind of just want to sleeve this joint up and just get a whole bunch of shit. Do you um, have a, to your perspective, do you have a bad tattoo? Like one, like you, the homie tatted and you kind of look at it and be like, nigga. damn, maybe I should have <laughs> gotten this one. Man, I got a regretful tat. Yeah, there we go. That's I got a regretful tat. I got a shorty name tatted. Yeah. and oh, yeah? But... But to save face on that, the tattoo artist fucked their name up. So I always, I always fucking lie about that shit when people ask me, like, yo, who name is that? I'm like, nigga, it's my cuz or some shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, Whatever. But fuck it up. Misspelled it? Yeah, he misspelled the shit. So it's oh, technically wow. not her fucking name. So, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so she can't really claim it and be like, oh, nigga, you got my name tattooed. Like, nah, I'm yeah, that that's shit a, wrong. That's, yeah, that's a nice yeah, little skit, bro. Yeah, yeah, so I'm trying to. Figure out how I can sleeve this motherfucker up so I can get it off. But it ain't big, though, bro. It's yeah. probably like that. Bro. Okay. Well, yeah. first, let me start by saying this. You saying you have a regretful tat. My yeah. thing is this. For people that are tatted, and when I say tatted, I mean like 10 plus tattoos. Yeah. I think you can't consider yourself tatted if you don't have a regretful tattoo. Yeah. You, everybody got to have a fucked up one. Yeah. You, know you got to have like, one. Like, if you just have a whole <clears throat> bunch of perfect tats that you got after, like, yeah. age 20 or some shit, you're not authentic. You ain't authentic with nah, this shit. Nah, nah, nah. Um, so, okay. so, um... I was gonna ask what led to you even getting shorty name, man. Um, ill nah nah, this fuck. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it ain't the ill nah nah, bro. Like it was like a it was like a high school tap, bro. I'm gonna be real. Okay. You know when you go through that phase, yeah. you in high school, you meet a shorty or whatever, and y'all think y'all gonna be together forever yeah. and shit. And and I was like in high school, you just yeah, want a reason to get tatted. High school, yeah. So uh, she got a tat of my name, and I got a tat of her name. And then yeah, it was just like man. Then later it was just like man, what the fuck was I thinking, bro? Like. Yeah. Stupid as shit. Did man. um who what did you go to like a, a shop for it or did, did you go to like Yeah, home I, I went it? to a shop for it and dude fucked it up. So I ended up getting the tap free and then I was supposed to come back to get it fixed and I never did. That's what's so up. So I was just like, fuck, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But that's good. As long as I ain't got nobody like a shorty, like a shorty portrait on me or nothing like that, I'm good. Cause I or met a shorty like on one your time neck like, or whatever. Like yeah, yeah bro. Yeah, I met bro. a shorty one time and I was dating and she had a nigga face on her back, bro. Are you serious? I swear to God. Like it was crazy because uh she came to the crib. This was like, you know, we went on like a few dates and shit. Uh -huh. And then um she came to the crib and uh you know, it was, you know, winter time, so she had like a jacket on, but with her back without uh -huh. back out. So I'm like, make yourself comfortable, sit on the bed and shit. Yeah. She's like, all right. She's on the bed. She take the jacket off. It's this bigger face and shit, what? bro. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And then she like, oh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be real. I'm sorry. Uh, I got a habit of tatting niggas that you know I date. So I'm like, how many niggas do you got? <laughs> I'm like, how many niggas? She like, I tatted four niggas on me. What? Red flag, like I'm like, yo, that count is all four red flags all together. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. <laughs> Shorty had a habit of tatting, tatting dudes niggas. on her that she's dealt with. Tatting niggas. What on the me. fuck type shit sense do that make? That shit was crazy, what? bro. And so she was like, Yeah, like I fall hard for niggas and I just tat niggas. Oh yeah, abort. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, you shit, yo, but let's go to the movies real yeah, quick. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, get yeah, up out yeah. of here. You know what I'm saying? Cause we ain't staying in the crib no more. Right, like, I thought he was getting comfortable. Nah, mm -hmm. abort. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. I gave her wow. some weak ass excuse of why we couldn't talk no more. I, I was just like, yo, I'm kind of busy. Yeah. Or whatever and shit like that. But man, bro, that shit freaked me out. I'm like, you got a whole like nigga face. On your shit. Were the other like, three faces or names? The other three was names. Still though, but what yeah, the fuck? But the dude face, and I'm talking about in the in the middle, bro. It's right in the middle of her back. And that, that sounds like some <clears throat> uh some like I don't want to say voodoo because I don't want to mm -hmm. disrespect voodoo, but that sounds like some like witchcraft shit. Like bro. if if she's tatting, I don't know. I couldn't trust that. Yeah, yeah I would have got up out of there. And she's like, she was like, Yeah, I tat every nigga that I'm like that I fell in love with. And I'm like, but do you fall in love easy or what? Like, she like, yeah, I tend to. You know what I'm saying? She like, please don't judge. I'm like, I don't judge you. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, bro, that was that by far probably was the one of the top things in my life that freaked me out, bro. Some crazy shit. Wow. Well, let me just give quick advice. If anybody does get, like, uh, a name tatted on them of a significant other, get it in red ink. Because red ink is the easiest to cover up. Ah, uh, yeah, I didn't know that. But That's you can crazy. spin it and say you're getting it in red to to symbolize love. 
That's fire, man, nigga. You yeah. be thinking, bro. Yeah, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my tattoo artist that told me that. So, yeah. a little free game for, you know what I'm saying, if y'all get pressured into doing that. I never would. Only one I got tattooed with my mother, my mother and my grandmother. I, See, I, smart I, man. I, smart I, man. I personally couldn't do it, but... um. Uh, anyway, back to music. Right. Um, <laughs> what um what can we expect to come? You know, uh, sooner than later. Man, um, just more visuals, man. Uh, for my last project, Better Late Than Never, that I dropped. Uh, I got a well, fuck it. I just go ahead and tell niggas. Yeah, well, I got a deluxe dropping for that shit. Mm. Uh, at the end of the year, got some crazy shit on there. Some crazy uh features, and then man, yeah, man, a lot of meetings in the works. You know what I'm saying? And who knows? Maybe next year. I might sign that deal or yeah. whatever, you know, it is talk. So I'm just trying to keep the door open, man. And just, like I said, keep putting out fresh music and fresh content and just staying consistent. As far as the visuals, people <clears throat> say that music videos today aren't <clears throat> as high quality mm -hmm. or just overall as good mm -hmm. as they used to be. Because remember, like, uh, MTV Jams and, and 106 and Park and all that stuff, like, it was about the video. Was like, crazy. the video had to be fired, a yeah. match to fire song and whatnot. So, like, um, as far as music videos now, like how you said visuals, like, what's the approach with that now? Like, what type of <clears throat> route do you try to take with music? Is it more so to make, like, the whole three minute or whatever song the video like really pop with it mm -hmm. or maybe have like clips that pop with it that really stick out what's crazy is bro i'm a super cinematic type artist mm -hmm. so when i make music videos most of the time they look like movies okay you know what i'm saying because i like to paint a picture for people yeah um but man i just tapped into this dude named 12 shout out to 12 from charlotte he's from uh he's rock nation videographer um and he put me up on so much game of how that you don't necessarily have to spend so much money and time on them, them videos that take three, four minutes. Mm -hmm. Because we live in an era now where everybody wants everything so fast and consistent, where the content could be so easy as you making a one minute video mm -hmm. of that song, or you, you take the first verse and the hook of something and then put that shit on IG Reels or something. Right. And then you put the damn captions with it, like, that gravitates for people so much, the captions with people, you know yeah. what I'm saying? When they see that shit and then yeah. they can read it and everything. So Yeah, I put captions um, on everything. Yeah, man. I didn't I, I I got tapped into that and he uh like really put me on game with that on how it can like really change. Cause he was uh shout out my homie Ruben Vincent from um Rock Nation Artist as well from Charlotte. Um, he's been doing that formula with him and it's been going crazy. Yeah. You know, so I think the next wave of stuff I'm gonna be doing is more so like that. I'm still gonna give people you know, the four minute joints too, right. you know, in between. But as far as staying consistent with it, where niggas might be getting a video like every week, it's mm -hmm. gonna be running. Nah, that's yeah. the right approach because yeah. I, I automatically my mind automatically went to two people. One of which is the um I think it's like the girls that be running in the camera and mm -hmm. shit. Like the camera's like following them or running with them or some shit like oh, that. Shit. I wish I knew the y'all know the name? Y'all know what I'm talking about though, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know the name of it, but it's like two girls where like the camera is going away and they're running towards the camera. Word. But it's it's not like a whole three minute joint it's short form that's it was spread so on. It's like, like they're running towards the camera and the camera's backing up. Yeah. Or, and word. they're like running through stores doing that shit. It's crazy. But like th that gravitated with TikTok and IG and whatnot. Word. And then um also uh who was I thinking of? The one dude um dark skinned dude with the fronts that was spitting over the Alicia uh, Keys uh, joint. Uh foggy or something like that. Uh he did the um he did the Alicia Keys cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He's fire. Exactly. Yeah. And see, that's that's what it was. Like it was circulating on Twitter and IG or whatnot. Mm -hmm. It was all. It only took like thirty to sixty seconds that's for you was, to see bro. that shit, yeah. and then it, and then it caught people. Yeah. So that's actually you know a good point that you made as far as like music videos now is more so like music video clips. That's all it is. Yeah. You don't have to do the YouTube joints no more because now if you monetize these reels, mm -hmm. you can get paid out these reels. Yeah. All that stuff like that now too. So that also goes back to what we was talking about earlier as far as, you know, mixtape stuff. Because mm -hmm. if you're doing a, a mixtape or an EP and then you're doing a, like a Jacket for Beast type joint like dude did with Leash Keys, mm -hmm. you do that and then you also drop those reels that you did. Like, bro, that all coincides together. That yeah. goes crazy. Yeah. You know? so, those small bits create one big thing. Yeah, bro. Instead of you just <clears throat> focusing on one yeah, big thing. Like you, instead of shooting a full four-minute video and then just putting out one video, right. you could... 
clip chop that bitch up. Yeah. yeah. And then put all them bitches out weekly. Cause the attention span <clears throat> now, bro, is insane. It's ridiculous, bro. Like even in, even making like podcast content, I have mm -hmm. to cater to it. Like it's like every quarter of the yeah. year. Like I have to kind of switch up some shit to cater to it. Like even with like this hour long episode, mm -hmm. like I'm gonna drop it, put it on YouTube and whatnot. But even to get people to come to it, I have to all these building blocks of yeah. clips from social media or short form videos on YouTube with like three minute videos yep. so that they look at it and be like, oh, this is dope. Oh, this is dope. Damn, what's that from? This interview? Mm -hmm. Let me watch the full thing. Yep. You know what I mean? Like <clears throat> the attention span is ridic and then rid ridiculous. And like we said with the uh, with the captions, mm -hmm. like I ha like you have, you have for any creators, at least as of now, as of October 2023, you have to use captions. You have to use them shit, Because bro. the thing is, at least with... It's different for different platforms, but that's definitely for IG because mm. how many times do we open up our phone on IG and it's on mute? We're yeah. just looking because you got pictures and videos, it, so yeah. you're just scrolling. But as opposed to TikTok, where no one goes to TikTok on mute because it's five second clips yeah. or something that's Should automatically right going. So yeah. you have to cater to the platform. But long story short, it's about that uh, that attention span, yeah. which is just shrinking by the month with bro. social media and whatnot. I'm gonna be real, bro. Like podcasting. And podcasting and streaming, like that shit that like, what's his name, Kai Sanat mm -hmm. does? Bro, mm -hmm. that's the wave right now. Yeah. Nigga, pod, you got podcasters and influencers like that, like him, making more than rappers, nigga. Oh, yeah. Like dead ass, you know what I'm saying? So by just vibing. <clears throat> by just vibing, bro. Yeah. Like one of my good friends, she's from New York, and she, she's she got a crazy huge podcast. Her name is uh, Mandy. She uh Mandy B, she does uh she does uh what's that shit called horrible decisions or some shit okay. like that. Look yeah, it up. Yeah. Bruh, she touring off of that podcast, yeah, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Doing yeah, they're crazy fire. numbers, bro. And I'm like from podcast. I'm like, nigga, I'm fuck rap, nigga. Yeah, <laughs> I'm about to come yeah, over there yeah. to y'all niggas, bro. Like well, well, that's why so many <clears throat> you have so many athletes and artists that do some form of podcast. And what I mean by that is do you see like with Shannon Sharp and Chad Ocho Cinco? Yeah, like that's, that's essentially doing. a podcast. Like if you're just talking into a mic into a camera about some trending topics, but if you have some character behind you, if you have some, you know, if you're entertaining right. with it, then it'll do numbers. Now, if you're dry, then maybe produce or direct or whatever may have you. But if you're entertaining, funny, mm -hmm. whatever, got some character or open, yeah, like that's another thing with a podcast, like being open, like horrible decisions. Like it's for those who don't Very know, it's horrible. Open. W H O R E able decisions like they talk about sex a lot, but mm -hmm. they're open. Very but a open. lot of people can't do that for whatever reason, whether it's mm -hmm. their professional career or they have you. So yeah. like, if you're open and entertaining, they're like you're you're kind of living a life that they wish they could live. Fast. That's why they tune in so much yep. to it. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely they the want way. reality. They want the real. Nowadays, I, th I think that's why shit pop. Back in the day with MTV in the real world or shit like that, mm. like with making a band, all that shit yeah. went crazy because you got to see. The real shit right. with niggas, you know how right. shit was going on. So now yeah. it's the normal now. Right. Like seeing this shit with artists. It used to be back in the day, you would never see how Jay Z and Beyonce, you know what I'm saying, went about their day exactly. or whatever. Niggas, everybody was so mysterious. Exactly. Now everybody want to fucking see that. And they yeah. open that shit up. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. That's mm. a fact. That's a fact. Well, listen, man. Um, shame, shame mm. game. I got a lot of great insight from the artist world as someone who's, you know, a true hip hop head. You know, I've, I'm always uh, wanting to learn like more behind the scenes of just listening to it just cause. And you dropped some great insight for me, oh, for those listening. Um, and then some, you know, just provided some great taste in music overall. Yeah. Um, I truly Thank appreciate you for pulling up all the way from Riley, pulling up to Charlotte. Yeah. Thank you for that for sure. My dog. You know what I mean? Um, before we get out of here, do you have any like, you know, last, uh, uh, messages for those man, in. just uh stream better late than never just stay connected with me man on i am shame gang and social media bro like yeah man we got some crazy shit dropping next year man so yeah and um, you can find everything in the bio of the episode whether you're watching and or listening you can find his youtube his ig handle and the better late than never um album it's all going to be tagged in on the bio uh but yeah. for those of you that are tuning in whether you're watching on youtube listening on podcast if you're listening i truly thank y'all but go ahead and click over to that youtube catch the vibe catch the visuals i truly thank y'all from the bottom of my heart make sure that you hit like and subscribe, share this out, send it to somebody. That's all I ask. You know what I mean? Um, if you want to do a little bit more than that, look in the bio for um, you know, questionnaires that you can fill out just to help me with the algorithm of the podcast. But 
Long story short, thank y'all for tuning in. Until next time, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. Peace. Mm -hmm.